Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us for our final Climate Watch update of 2022. Where has this year gone? Uh, this is the outlook for December, but also summer itself. So let's take a look and see what's going on because uh, La Nina is still with us, but it is just starting to fade away right now. It has already peaked. On this animated wind map, it shows where all the moisture is in the atmosphere, which is in the bright blue. These are the areas where rain and low pressure zones that create heavy rain are most likely to form. So La Nina's peaked, but it is still just with us. Let's take a look and see what is happening. This is the model of all models, showing all the sort of world's most trustworthy long range climate modeling. And it shows us that here in December, La Nina is just starting to pull back to neutral. But look at this, February, we're back into neutral. So at some point over summer, it could be in December, maybe in January, we're likely to be back to neutral. Cause look at this, April, smack bang in the middle. It's been a while since we've seen that. And next year, we could be seeing it pulling further towards El Nino. So that is worth keeping an eye on. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So where have we been? Well, this is this year. And you can see from winter, we came back here uh, hovering around La Nina in spring um, and then properly really got into it here in just the November part. So only just got into La Nina. But as we bounce into summer, look at that. That line just goes straight up towards El Nino conditions. That's the opposite of La Nina. And for New Zealand, that usually means more high pressure zones out on the Tasman. And that placement means more windy westerlies and southwesterlies for New Zealand. And I've got to say, the long range outlook showing the air pressure systems doesn't say um, that El Nino is definitely coming, but it certainly suggests that La Nina is fading away. So let's take a look at the air pressure zones. Uh, this is for the month of December and we start with week one for December the 1st. Where are the highs and the lows uh, located? Now this map is a little interesting because what it shows you, I think you'll notice it, a lot of low pressure coming up, not just this week, but in the weeks ahead. But the constant through the whole uh, month of December is that there's still a lot of high pressure coming along the southern part of Australia and then spilling out towards New Zealand. It's a little bit like what I was just saying about how El Nino is shaped. We see a lot of highs out here, and that encourages a lot of windy weather, just like this, as you see on the map. So that is possibly coming through for us now already, it's starting to show up. It's more of a neutral weather pattern. It's not really dominated by the tropics or the Southern Ocean. It's messy, it's chaotic. And that's really what we're seeing at the moment. So as we kick off the first week of December, obviously that low pressure zone is in New Zealand at the moment, and then it will change more to a westerly, southwesterly flow for the first week coming up. Now, as we get into the second week, starting on December the 2nd, we've got a big area of high pressure finally crossing the country. So it moves through, but it's narrow because it's shaped north to south, it's tall. And the weather doesn't move from north to south, usually it usually moves from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side. So while this is a big tall high, it's not gonna last too long, it's gonna be moving eastwards and behind it, Low pressure is dominating a large portion of Australia. Thankfully, no major storms showing up, although this one here worth keeping an eye on. But this one down here, normal for the Southern Ocean, plenty of low pressure coming through. And then we get into the third week. So this is the middle of December. And if you're trying to figure out, we don't cover the fourth week because modeling that far out is not very accurate. But what you can sort of do is look at this and figure out, well, what's far over here on the left-hand side? Because that will be drifting along this week and going into the last part of December. And what you're seeing is a lot of low pressure up in the north, around the tropics and the northern half of Australia. We're still seeing that slither of high pressure across the southern part of Aussie, and it just brushes out towards New Zealand, but it's narrow in the New Zealand area, which means we're still vulnerable for low pressure zones down here, but also potentially from the north. This is a pretty narrow uh, wall of high pressure blocking tropical storms. So we could be seeing weather from both the north and the south. That would match a neutral pattern where La Nina fades out and we're not in La Nina or El Nino. We're just in the usual chaotic neutral weather pattern. And you want to know what the weather's like when you live on two mountainous islands, partially in the roaring 40s? A bit like this, unsettled. So this summer coming up is going to be pro probably good for a lot of farmers with pasture growth maybe a little more challenging for those going away camping, putting up tents and awnings, things like that. Let's have a look at rainfall now. So this is the first week of December, the departure from normal. Uh, pretty simple, red, pink shading shows it's drier, blue shows it's wetter, white 
normal rainfall for what has been recorded at this time of the year over the past few decades. So there's plenty of wet weather with all those low pressure zones to the north, but the high pressure zones coming through Australia and out into the Tasman, keeping New Zealand either a little bit drier than average or about where we should be. That means there are still rainmakers coming through, but for some places it won't be as much as what we've seen across November. Let's take a look now at the first half of December, rainfall coming through. We have a zoomed up version of New Zealand in a moment, but just a big picture look at it. The pale blue and the yellows. Whenever you're looking at colors on a rain map, never look at just one color, look at the color on either side of them. So three colors. So if you look here at the pale blue, it's at the bottom of the scale surrounded by green maybe yellow. So when you see green, yellow and blue, that's the bottom of the scale. If you're looking for heavy rain, you look for dark blue surrounded by red and purple, which is this area. So the tropics looking very much like they should do, especially when we've got a bit of a La Nina system around. So we're seeing more rainmakers, heavy rain around Fiji, parts of New Caledonia, Vanuatu and of, of course around the Queensland coastline. Now let's take a closer up look at New Zealand, not as wet. So yes, we've, we've still got a bit of a November weather pattern carrying on into December, but because it is December, the total of rain is starting to drop. So we're still getting it coming in from the west though. That's not very much like La Nina. That's more like a neutral weather pattern. So we're seeing bigger totals here, but even over the next 15 days coming up, that's only 100 millimetres or so along the west coast. Maybe 150 millimetres the tops of the hills around the Nelson Ranges and further down around Fiordland. Eastern areas, bottom of the scale in the yellows and greens, 10 to 30 or 40 millimetres coming through for many of you. So it's kind of normal rainfall, it's not exceptional, uh, and also we're not really seeing any drought zones falling. Let's take a look at the longer range outlook from IBM. This is covering December only. Now the good news about this, it's very similar to November, it's sort of in the margin of error both dry and wet. So leans a little bit green, up around 12 millimetres above average, and the yellow around about 12 millimetres below average, which is really in the margin of error. And this is not a weather forecast, this is a climate outlook. This is basically telling you, or telling us, where we think the most amount of rain will be, but it's not a weather forecast for your house. You could still have a thunderstorm in one of these dry areas, or drier areas, and end up with double your monthly rainfall. But this is giving you a general outlook that Conditions are likely to be wetter in northern New Zealand and eastern areas of the North Island and clipping the south. And the driest weather, drier than usual, will be down around Southland and Westland and Fiordland. But you could still get 150 millimetres of rain falling in Fiordland. It just might be you know, 20 millimetres less than it usually would get, and that's why it's shaded a little more in that orange colouring. Let's have a look at all of summer. Kind of what I just said, the North Island leans a little bit wetter, so does the north and eastern sides of the South Island, whereas the lower portion leans a little bit drier. Uh, heaviest rain looks to be around Bay of Plenty and Northland. These areas could get some soaking rains coming through, probably from some sort of tropical setup, and you can see that block of high pressure from Australia may be the reason why summer may be just a little bit drier than average for those of you down in the south. Perhaps Fiordland being the most, uh, well, driest compared to average, yeah, leaning that way. Let's get into the uh, soil moisture anomaly thanks to the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, the North Island. No sign of drought coming in. I think we're pretty safe to say that for the rest of 2022. In the South Island, much better looking now uh, than it was a week or two ago. There were concerns about Canterbury getting dry. I know there's a bit of a saying that we're pretty much only two weeks away from a drought at any point in time in New Zealand in summer. Not entirely true, but the South Island in a pretty good situation heading into the dry months coming up. Now look at the temperatures. A lot of complaints about temperatures this year. A lot of people pushing back, not agreeing that it's warmer than average, but you might be missing out one part of the equation, nighttime. So daytime, sure, cloudy, wet, put your heat pump on, and then you say, today's not as warm as it used to be. I remember hot, sunny days. But nighttime temperatures have been above average for months. We saw that with Mount Thruapehu not getting snow, lots of rain though, and we saw Waikato having far fewer frosts than they normally would. So the northern fringes of um, th that cold weather at winter really noticed that extra degree of warmth. So as we go into summer, it could be the same thing. Daytime temperatures may not be as hot as you've experienced in previous summers. A lot of cloud, maybe a bit more humidity, but the overnight temperatures could be up. So overall, we're expecting most of the country to be about half a degree to one degree warmer than average. That's the general forecast for the next three months ahead. 
Now let's have a look at the uh, sea surface temperatures. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia. This shows the area that's warmer than average and also look at this around New Zealand. So up here, that's the La Nina event down here, our localized marine heat wave. And around the equator, this is where you measure La Nina, colder than average in this big portion. If it does switch to El Nino, this does the old switcheroo. And you end up with the blue over on this side and a lot of the red shifts over towards South America. So that's the current sea surface temperatures. On the big picture here it is more localised thanks to the Moana project. This map here shows where the, uh, the difference, the departure from normal or where the marine heat waves currently are. So the redder or the darker the shading gets the more likely it's a marine heat wave. This is actually one of the more normal looking maps I've seen this year. For the most part, this year has been much warmer than average in the marine areas, and it still is. Most places are still leaning warmer than average, especially down here around uh, Fiordland and Stewart Island. It's not overly warm though. This is the temperature map on this side, so the blue means it's still kind of cold to go for a swim. But in the north, very good swimming conditions at the moment. Watch out for sharks. Seriously, there is probably, probably going to be more likelihood of sharks in New Zealand this summer because of the warmer than average conditions going on in many of our beaches. And that is all from me for our final Climate Watch update of 2022. We take uh, a couple of months off from doing the Climate Watch updates, so we don't have one at the end of December. That's basically it. Our next one will be on February 1st. It sounds a long way away, but it's only eight weeks away. So in a couple of months, we're back with our next Climate Watch video, and we'll more than likely have news updates at ruralweather.co.nz and obviously over at weatherwatch.co.nz. Our weather videos, they carry on right through until about Christmas. Uh, that is all from me. Have a great summer and we'll see you later on.